Eric Ubalakar with Fullmount MMA, joined today by UFC light heavyweight Jimmy Crute, who's returning to fight Alonzo Menafield at UFC 284 in Perth. Jimmy, thank you for joining. Thanks for having me on, mate. No of course. At all. Um, it's been over a year since your last fight, and now you get to return in front of your home country. Uh, that's got to be pretty exciting for you to come back in these uh, conditions, right? Yeah, man. I'm actually I'm really looking forward to not having to travel so far to fight. And just the fight in general, obviously, I've been out for, for um, over a year now. And it's been so, I can't even remember the last fight I've had at home. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the short flight to Perth. That's got to be a pretty big uh, impact, actually. No jet lag. I mean, flying to Vegas from Australia or, you know, elsewhere is is such an issue. Like, dude, that's probably a pretty big advantage for you coming into this fight now. Uh, I don't think it makes too much of a difference in the actual fight. But just the, the travel before, just it's boring. So um, I look forward to rolling in, getting the job done and rolling out, getting home and getting stuck into the next camp and not have to worry about the the 12-hour 12, 12 flights and all that. Of course. Well, uh, I, I love the last interview that we did. You really opened up about um, the layoff, taking some time off to heal your mind and your body being the best thing for you. Um, how do you feel now that you have a fight booked, that you did have this layoff, that you did get to rehab the knee, uh, get your mind right? How are you feeling with this fight coming up in February? Honestly, mate, I feel like a different person. Um, and that's going to show, I'm not going to go into too much detail about everything. You know, I'll write a book one day about all that stuff. Um, but I honestly feel like a different person. And I, I truly believe that the 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 imaginary ceiling that was on my career, my whole career is gone now. You know, I've um I made a lot of changes and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna shine on, on February twelfth. Just how different is the Jimmy Crute that fought Jamal Hill to the Jimmy Crute that we'll see fighting Alonzo Menafield in February? Uh the Jimmy Crew that you seen last time was a broken man, um, with with no vision. Um now yeah, as I said, I'm not gonna go too much into it. I've I've got to perform for I can sit here and talk all I want and, and go out there and not perform. So I'd rather let my actions uh, speak louder than my words. But just expect something different. You know, I've I've I made a lot of changes in my life. I've I've um yeah, I've just I've changed everything really and I'm really looking forward. It's the first time in a long time where I think about fighting that I get goosebumps when I think about it. So it's good to be back. Well you've changed the haircut too. Is there there's no more mullet anymore? Is that is that part of the changes? Yeah, that that guy's dead and gone. <laughs> um, you know, it, it was a bit of fun while it lasted, but I look back. I even look back at it, and I'm just like, oh, that, that's it's not me, man. Well, you, uh, you know, you mentioned that it, you get goosebumps thinking about stepping back into the octagon again. And I know the last time we talked, you told me that you were learning to love the sport again after kind of hating it for so long. You know, you jumped into it very young. You were very active, um, and you said it you know, in our last interview that it did, it, it made you hate the sport. Um, do you still love the sport uh, as much as you did six months ago when, when you were telling me about it? Even more so now, man, because I'm seeing the results in training. You know, I felt like I felt like my training was so stagnant and um, just everything in life was so stagnant for me. I hadn't I hadn't involved in, in years. In, in fact, I was actually regressing because I was just trying to train as hard as I could smash my body and not actually enjoy it, not take the time to enjoy it, not not implement rest or anything. Now, I, I wake up every morning and I, I can't wait to get to training. I can't wait. I like It makes me happy going to training. It's my happy place. So um, that's a nice feeling, man. It's a, it's a nice feeling just from from struggling to get out of bed and, and, and get, get the motor going in the morning. So it's a, it's a good feeling. That's all I'll say about that. Yeah. Why Why do you think that that shift happened? Is it because you kind of had this time to rest and you're being, I guess, you know, smarter about training and, and resting and things like that? Like, how did the shift happen? Yeah, so it's definitely definitely the forced time off. You know, I wanted to have time off after my last fight. I, I told myself and I told my team that I was going to have time off. And then as soon as the UFC offered me a fight, I said yes, like an idiot. <laughs> I didn't stick to my word. And, and then... And then the knee, the knee injury happened in training. So um, I think that would that happened for a reason to give to give me to force me to have time off to take a really good hard look at myself, um, and address a lot of things that I was just avoiding. Not not even in training and not even in my life, but 
like deep down inside of me, like go face my demons sort of thing. And, um, you know, once you do that, you set yourself free. It's been a long time since the knee injury, but I know how these things can, you know, affect you guys and, and how, you know, you, you do your day to day, how you go into training. And a lot of times, you know, it could flare up again. Is the knee 100% now? What was that rehab like? My knee is better than before my, in- my knee, my, my injured knee, my injured knee, my right knee is better than my left knee. So I'm going to start working on my left knee now. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, it's fine, mate. Um, it's better than it's ever been. In fact, it, it, I, I, I blew my ACL out a few years ago now, and it's better than before I did it the first time. Um, so it's just all of these movements that I never used to be able to do. I'm obviously taking my um, my rehab and everything seriously. I'm still working on it every single day, even though it's it's medically cleared. And yeah, obviously I've I've had a weakness in my in my knees my whole career, so I'm just gonna keep keep those quads and glutes strong and um yeah, look after look after my joints. When you hated the sport, were you still watching it actively? No, nah. no, nah, I'd, I'd, I'd turn into it. I didn't hate the sport. I loved the sport. I always loved the sport, but I was so drained from the sport. There was nothing left in me. I had to refill my cup. I wouldn't say I always loved the sport. It was a, it was always the thing that I wanted to do, but I just had nothing left in me. I given it all. Do you do you watch it now? Yes, yes, I love watching. I love watching old combat sports. Love watching the UFC every week. Love watching boxing now. Love watching kickboxing. I even watch jiu-jitsu. I never used to watch jiu-jitsu. Now I even watch a little bit of jiu-jitsu and wrestling. I'm just trying to learn as much as I can and take everything from everything. Um. So that's a big change for me. I never, I never really used to tune into other, other combat sports. Really, that's interesting. You, you just watched MMA. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's helping you now, kind of evolve your jujitsu game and uh, you know some of the other combat sports that you weren't really watching? Like, do you think that that's actually made an impact in your training? Hundred percent, man. There's a reason why all these other sports do different things, and if you, there's a lot of things that, like, say, boxers or, or kickboxers jiu-jitsu guys that they're, they're doing that isn't really implemented in MMA yet. And it's just because people haven't figured out to how to um how to to cross it over and they sort of just write it off. But man, there's so many there's so many things you can learn from other sports, uh, even non-combat sports, but just the way just watching the way the human body can move, it's um a lot of things you can implement. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I want to talk a little bit about this matchup because when I saw this get announced um, you know, as a fan as well. I was pretty excited about it. I mean, you are, have always been a very talented fighter in the light heavyweight division. And Alonzo Menafield is one of the scariest looking guys in the light heavyweight division. He's enormous. He has knockout power. Um, how did this fight come to be? And, and what do you think of him as the guy that you're making your return against? It's actually, I'll, I'm really excited for this fight, man, because as you said, he's a scary looking dude. And, you, you know, you, you, it's hard not to get hyped up for it, you know. But I, I think I would... It wouldn't matter who I'm in there with. Um, I'm going to respect whoever I'm in there with. I know at this weight class that anyone can put anyone out. So I've got to be on my game against anyone. But it is an added bonus when you when you look across the cage and the guy looks like um, looks like Alonzo Minifield. Um, but, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited for this matchup, man. Um, the UFC just – I just basically said to the UFC, give me give me whoever you want. I don't care. Um, and, they, and they came to me with Alonzo after a few um, – mismatch opponents and not mismatch opponents a few um opponents that couldn't make it or, or whatnot and and i just said yeah i love that matchup and um, i think it complements my style really well you know it's, it's going to push me in training i know i have to be on my game but you know when we step in there I'm, I, I think you're going to see that i'm on a different level to this guy yeah i was going to ask you about that because your last couple fights you were fighting guys up the rankings you know they were clearly you were you were kind of the guy moving up the ladder now you're fighting uh, an unranked guy who is probably trying to move his way up the ladder as well. Um, does uh, it sounds like you love the matchup? It didn't really matter to you, but was there any hesitance from you to take a fight with somebody out of the rankings? Man, as far as I'm concerned, when we sign that contract, my ranking goes and it goes to the middle of the octagon, and we fight for it. It's the same, I think, like. When, like world title fights when when they sign the contract there is no world title they are not the champion anymore they're fighting for the world championship and I think that's the way I'm going to look at it going forward 
um, that that well, I don't even know what I'm ranked, thirteen or something. I'm not ranked thirteen anymore. That ranking is in the middle of the octagon. I mean, Alonso Middlefoot are going to go fight for it, and um, you know, I don't I don't see myself above him. I don't see him above me. We're just going to go fight and see who the better man is. What do you think that fight's going to look like in Perth, in front of the full crowd? Ooh, um, it's gonna it's gonna look like a good display of skill on my behalf. Um, Alonso is going to bring his own game, I'm sure, but I think I think he's going to be very shocked at what he prepared for and what he's getting. Mm-hmm. You're you're not somebody that's used to being on you know a little bit of a losing skid. You had uh, two losses um, in, in your last two fights. Uh, you know, obviously they're both top five light heavyweights now. Um, do you feel any added pressure in this fight since this is kind of a new situation for you? Mate, as far as I'm concerned, I'm 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 making my debut. That uh, that person is that per- that person doesn't exist anymore. The person you seen in December last year, he doesn't exist anymore. I'm I'm making my my professional debut in this fight. Um, everything in the past, wins, losses, I'm not carrying them with me anymore. I'm starting fresh. You mentioned that you uh, obviously have been watching the sport more recently. Um, so much has been happening in the light heavyweight division uh, in, in the top of it uh, with Yuri Prohaska getting injured and relinquishing the title. Uh, now Jan Blahovich is going to be fighting Magomed Ankalaev for the vacant title. I mean, have you been keeping up with all this? What, what are your thoughts on on what's happened? Yeah, um, obviously it's pretty devastating that uh, Yuri and, and Glover's off, but I think that I think the two next best guys in the division are getting the, getting the crack, which is awesome to see. And I'm happy for both of them. Um, but I, yeah, I do pay close, close attention now and I never used to pay close, close attention to what was happening at the top of the division simply for the fact that I didn't believe that I could get there. Now I'm, I pay attention to every title fight. I, I, I look at the guys fighting for the title and I match them up against myself. And for the first time in my career, I know, I know I'm there. I know that I could fight for a world title tomorrow. So it is, um, yeah, it's a great fight. Um, and I am looking forward to watching it and I, you know, I respect both men. It's going to be a good fight. So, oh, Absolutely. Well, we're approaching the end of 2022 right now. You'll be fighting uh, pretty close to the beginning of 2023. I'd love to know when 2024 rolls around, you know, we're looking about a year ahead. Uh, where do you want to see yourself? Where would you like to end up and be like, this year was a success for me? I just want to be active, man. The one thing that, um, the one thing that I wish, not wish, I don't know. I just wish I could have been more active in my career and now's the perfect time for me to to start being a bit more active, I think. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay fit all year. I'm gonna take every opportunity that the UFC give me. And you know, if I can get if I can squeeze in four fights next year, get on a four fight win streak, that puts me in a really good position for um for the for the following year. So um I just wanna be active, man. Absolutely. Well, uh, best of luck, Jimmy. I uh, really appreciate the time. Before I let you go, I wanted to give you the floor. Anything you wanted to shout out, promote, anyone you wanted to thank, uh, I'll give you the time. Uh, you always put me on the spot with these. I, I haven't actually thought about it. I just want to thank my, uh, my team and um, and Unibet, my sponsor, Unibet. Um, apart from that, it's all business. Fantastic. Well, Jimmy, thank you again. Uh, can't wait to watch your big return. Glad you get to do it in front of your home fans. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks for that. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching this video. If you like our content, be sure to subscribe to Full Man MMA. And while you're at it, make sure to hit the bell icon as well so you never miss an update from us.